Hi, in this video, we are going to talk about analysis of quicksort. For analysis purpose, I have considered Hoover's partition here. However, the time complexities in both Hoover's partition and Lomudo partition are going to be same. In fact, the extra space requirements, they are also going to be same in both the partition algorithms. Naive partitioning algorithm, however, requires some more extra space. Let us take a look at this algorithm and let us analyze it for different cases. Let us first talk about the best case, best case of quicksort. In general, we never analyze algorithms for best case. It's not recommended to analyze for best case. But for quicksort, it's a good idea to analyze for best case so that we get some idea about average case. I have drawn here an example recursion tree for the best case. What happens in best case is your input array is divided into two halves in every recursive call, right? So your pivot is always picked in such a way that it is middle element value wise and it puts half elements on left and half elements on right. And we are considering here Hoover's partition. So pivot itself is not fixed. You know, pivot can go anywhere, but it is ensured that elements on left are smaller than or equal to pivot. Elements on right, they are greater than or equal to pivot. So you call recursively for left half and right half, right? In Lomudo partition, you call, you fix an element, right? And in best case, you will be calling for n minus one by two, left half elements and n minus one by two right half elements, right? In lo in Hoover's, you will be calling for n by two and n by two. So I've considered the best case where we have eight elements and we divide them in such a way that we have zero to three elements, I mean four elements on left side and four elements on right side. So these are the indexes we have written. L is zero, H is seven, L is zero, H is three, L is four, H is seven. So this is the best case scenario. Your partition point, it always divides your array into two halves. What is the time complexity in this particular scenario? Let's analyze it. How much work we do at this level? We call the partition function for n elements from zero to n minus one, and that takes cn time, right? So we do cn work at this level. How much work we do, at the, do at this level? We call partition function for n by two elements here. So it takes cn by two work, this particular partition function, and then partition function takes cn by two. So cn by two plus cn by two is cn. So we do cn work at this level. How much work we do at this level? We again do cn by four, cn by four, cn by four, and cn by four work, and four into cn by four is cn. And then we are going to make recursive calls for single, single elements, zero, one, two, and then it will make a recursive call for three, and it will make a recursive call for five, four, five, six, and seven. Once single call are made, you stop here, right? That's your termination point because you go inside this if condition only when there are more than one elements. So how much work you're doing here? These are all constant operations, right? Theta one, theta one, theta one operation. So you do theta n work here, right? Theta one plus theta one plus theta one n times. So this is theta n work. So how much work you're doing it overall? Right, what is the sum of all this work that you've done in all the levels? So all the work done in all the recursive calls can be written this way, cn plus cn, cn, and then theta n for the last level for single, single element recursive calls. Now, how many cn are going to be there? Let's take a look at this example. We have eight elements and we have cn three times. One, two, three, right? So how many CN we have for it? Three. How many CNs we are going to have for 16? Just pause this video and try to guess yourself. 
in every recursive call you are reducing the n by 2 right you are dividing n by 2 so if n is 16 then it will become 8 in the next recursive call then 4 then 2 then 1 right so how many recursive calls it will take for 16 it's going to be 4 cns right and for 32 it's going to be 5 cn so we can say it's these are log n terms right these are log n terms because we are dividing n by 2 in every uh, every recursive call in the best case so we have cn into log n plus theta n right and how much is this we can ignore the lower order term so we get the time complexity as cn log n or we can say theta n log n in the best case right so that's the time complexity of quick sort in the best case i have redrawn the recursion tree for general best case when you have n elements and you have n by 2 elements on the left side in the partition n by 2 elements on the right side so if you see for n elements you do cn work at the top level then cn by 2 plus cn by 2 cn work at the next level cn by 4 4 times cn work at the next to next level and at the last level you do theta n work because you call for single single elements and when you call for single element you do not go inside if condition and you come out in constant time so the overall work done is cn plus cn dot dot cn means these cn for log n times right so this is cn into log n cn into log 2n plus theta n which is theta n log n right so in best case we have the time complexity as theta n log n here is a recursion tree diagram for worst case what happens in worst case your partition function divides your array in such a way that you have one element on one side and n minus one elements on the other side your worst case diagram can be like this or it can be something like this also that you have cn minus one on one side and one element on the other side which is theta one work then you have you know theta one on here and cn minus two here then theta one here and cn minus two here cn minus three here so this is also worst case if your partition function is again and again dividing your array in such a way that you have n minus one elements on one side and n elements on the other side then that's the worst case that's the worst case of quick sort if you remember the best case in best case our recursion became something like this we had n as an input and we were dividing it into two parts two equal parts 2tn by 2 plus cn work for the partitioning this was the recursion for best case now if you try to write the recurrence for worst case what will be your recurrence for the worst case it will be tn equal to where tn is the time taken by quick sort for input size n it will be tn minus 1 because you have n minus 1 elements on the one side plus theta n work to partition right and we have solved this in the recurrence track right this is n square but let's see again let's see uh, with this example also how are we getting n square so we are doing cn cn minus 1 cn minus 2 work here and how many levels we have in this tree so you say have an input array of size 5 something like 0 to 4 and you recursively call your quick sort for 0 to 0 then you recursively call quick sort for 1 to 4 then again worst case considering 1 to 1 then 2 to 4 then 2 to 2 and worst case considering 3 to 4 so if you keep on doing this way you will have how many levels so let me draw the last level as well 4 4 and 3 3 that's your last level so how many levels you have for five nodes you have five levels 1 2 3 4 5 right for n nodes how many levels you will have n levels and if you do the sum of the series cn cn minus 1 cn minus 2 up to 1 what you will get 
you will get c n square i mean theta n square n into n plus 1 by 2 this is sum of natural numbers right so you will get theta n square and plus you have theta 1 theta 1 theta 1 this is also n times plus you will have theta n right which is theta n square so this is uh, one way to analyze the worst case other way could be t n equal to t n minus 1 plus theta n right which is big o of n square that's the worst case right and if you want to write the best case recursion that will be t n equal to 2 t n by 2 plus theta n in both the recursions theta n is for uh, partitioning work and uh, in worst case you will have n minus 1 elements on the one side so you will recursively call for n minus 1 in best case you will have n by 2 n by 2 elements on both sides and you will make two recursive calls for n by 2 n by 2 so that's the best case recursion and recurrence that's the worst case recurrence let us now get an idea of average case analysis please note that we are not going to do average case analysis exactly because that is too much mathematical here we are only going to consider a case to get an idea of average case analysis Please remember, for average case analysis, you need to consider every permutation of input array, assuming the fact that every permutation is equally likely in input, right? And with this assumption, for every permutation, you need to count how many partitions, how many elements will be there in one partition, other partition. You need to do sum of all the times taken and then divided by the total number of permutations. So we are not going to do that we are going to consider a situation where we have n by 10 elements on one side and 9 n by 10 elements on the other side. So we are considering a fairly unequal division where you have out of 100 elements say 10 elements on one side and 90 elements on the other side. So that's a fair assumption for considering the average case. So I've taken an example of 1000 here and I have assumed that we have 9 n by 10 elements on one side and n by 10 elements on the other side. So what will happen in this case, you will have 100 elements here and then 900 elements here. And in this 100 case, you will have 10 here and 90 here. In this 10 case, you will have 1 here and 9 here. In this 9 case, although it's not exactly uh, n by 10 and 9 n by 10, because you know it will be 8.1 if I do 9 in by 10. So I've considered 1 and 8 elements, right? Because that's not a possible partition. Your overall sum should be equal to 9 and the equal integer element should be there on every side. So again, you will have 1 by 8, 1 and 8 elements here and 8 and 73 elements here and so on. If you see this recursion tree, what is happening here? This level has all the elements filled right and this is last to such level below this level you do not have this these two right and below this level you do not have these two right so this filling in this recursion tree it's going to be partial right and this tree is going to exhaust first then this tree then this tree and this tree is going to go down 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 right so it's going to be the deepest tree the rightmost tree right and this is going to be the shallowest tree the leftmost tree that's how the recursion tree is going to be so what we do to analyze in such a case we consider the recursion tree to be completely full right we assume that okay let there be extra work done here and we compute an upper bound on the time complexity right so we do cn work here for sure cn work here for sure c1 work here for sure then we do less than equal to cn work at this level when this becomes you know completely full the last level which is completely full because you have theta one work here and then you have cn minus one sort of work here then you again have less than equal to cn work here right and then you again have cn less than equal to cn work here so for simplicity we assume that this is equal to cn right let's let's assume this is cn and your tree is completely full so we'll have cn cn work to get an upper bound right we are not going to get an exact bound we are going to consider upper bound 
so we consider cn at every level now how many levels we have right so can you guess the number of levels till the deepest node right the last rightmost node is going to be the deepest node till the deepest node how many levels you are going to have in the uh, tree in the recursion tree so if you see this side the rightmost side which is going to be the deepest side you are dividing your n by 10 by 9 right so when you divide your n by 2 you have log 2n levels now when you are dividing your n by 10 by 9 in every level how many levels you will have you will have log 10 by 9 base n these many levels you will have the deepest level is going to be this much below right and if i assume that total work done is cn although we have less than cn at the lower levels and much less at the lower and lower levels right so if i assume that i have cn work done at every level i'll have cn into this much work and i put an big o here right so what is this value this value is actually big o of n log n only because base in log does not matter it's a asymptotic notation and we can change the base by multiplying and divide by some constant so in the case where you have slightly unfair division or maybe too much unfair division where you have n by 10 elements on one side and 9 n by 10 elements on the other side still you are getting the time complexity as n log n so this is not average case analysis this is a case where division is slightly unfair and we get an idea that even with this unfair division we are getting the time complexity as n log n that's an upper bound right that's an upper bound on the time complexity so we have analyzed quick sort in best case in worst case and to get an idea of average case we have considered an unfair division if you even consider random pivot selection you know if you randomly pick a pivot right even in that case it can be proved that the expected time taken by quick sort is theta n log n only so the random pivot selection also gives you theta n log n time and that's how quick sort is n log n on average and that's the reason it works better than other competitors like mars sort and quick sort all the worst cases n square but on average it takes n log n time only